There's a number of ways to wash your car without the traditional hose and bucket. One would be a rinseless wash and the other would be a waterless wash and I'm going to show you how to do both of them. Now here's some reasons for using this type of wash. One, perhaps you live in a condo and you don't have access to running water in a bucket. Two, perhaps you're traveling, you want to get your car clean on the road. Maybe you live in an area of government restrictions where you're not allowed to use running water. Or perhaps you're a mobile detailer and you can't use running water in your business. Another time would be the winter. Maybe everything's frozen outside, so here's a way to wash your car and get it clean in the garage during the winter. Now, both these don't use a hose in a bucket, but you still use water. Let me show you how. First, with a rinseless wash, what you're going to do is use anywhere from two to four gallons in a bucket and you're going to add a rinseless wash concentrate to the water. In this case we're using the Pinnacle Liquid Gloss Rinseless Wash Concentrate with Carnuba and you add one ounce per gallon. Since I've got about three gallons in here I'm going to go ahead and add about an ounce and a half of concentrate. And then I'm going to go ahead and stir this up a little bit using the stir stick I always keep with me. Just like that. Now this is a grit guard and what this is for is just to trap dirt particles on the bottom of the bucket and because I'm going to throw my microfiber towels in there in a second I also want to keep them off the bottom of the bucket and all you do is just press this down in there till it's snug and there you go that's the grit guard insert. Now the way you use the rinseless wash is you just want to take clean, dry, fluffy microfiber towels and just start dunking them in here. And I think you'll notice I have a lot of microfiber towels here and that is the secret to using either a rinseless or a waterless wash. It's lots of towels because as you're removing dirt and it's going to build up on the face of the microfiber towel, you want to fold to a clean side so you don't rub the dirt you removed back over the paint. And that's probably the most common question I get about using a rinseless wash or a waterless wash is how do you use this technique without scratching the paint. And it all comes down to using lots of clean soft dry microfiber towels and a quality rinseless wash or waterless wash. Okay so I've got a lot of towels down in here, get them all saturated. And then the way you're going to do this, because you're using actually quite a bit of water, is you're going to make a couple of wipes across the paint and then you're going to need a drying towel to dry the water off. So here we go. First I'll take a towel out of here and I'm going to wring out all the excess water. I want it wet, but I don't want it dripping wet. Just like that. Now I'm going to fold it four ways. And then here's the technique. I'm going to start in the middle of the hood and work this way. And first I'm going to wash or wipe this section of the hood with the trailing edge of the microfiber towel making contact with the paint. Next I'm going to take and make one more wipe but I'm going to lift that up so the primary focus of the towel is in about halfway. And now I'm done with that side. So I fold to I flip over to the other side and just repeat the process. Now lift it up about halfway. And these two sides are now done. I'm going to fold to the other side and then I would continue around the car till I've used up all the fluffy sides of this towel. Okay. And when I'm done with this one towel, I'm going to set it aside and switch over to another towel. Again, wring the water out. and continue moving around the car and get the windshield lift it up halfway make one more wipe go to the next side lift it up catch the center of that towel fold to a new side there we go Dispose of that one. Grab my drying towel. This is a waffle weave drying towel. It's made out of microfiber. You can wash it, reuse it over and over again, and it absorbs water like a sponge.
And that's how you use a rinseless wash. Now it's pretty easy to do the rest of the body panels. The next question I get is, well, how do you do the wheels and tires? You wait till you get all the body panels done, then you use the leftover water from your rinseless wash with the wheel face brush. Wash your wheels, wash your tires, dipping into the bucket, and then hand dry them. And that's how you can wash an entire car using a rinseless wash. Now for a waterless wash, it's kind of the same idea, only instead of using a bucket of water, you're going to use a spray-on product. This is the Pinnacle Liquid Crystal Waterless Wash. And this is like um, a high-intensity cleaning and high-intensity lubrication wash that also leaves some gloss behind. And the secret to this is not only using lots of microfiber towels, but it's laying down a heavy saturation of product. And that's where I think a lot of people, you know, miss the boat on this, is they missed it on like a spray detailer, and that's not how you use it. You actually want to lay down a heavy saturation and then let those cleaning agents go to work loosening and softening all the road film and dirt before you start to wipe it off. So it's not a light mist, it's a heavy saturation. And one of the things I teach in the class is for classy cars and muscle cars or street rods is I tend not to use running water on them because they'll get down into places where you can't dry, potentially causing rust. This is a 1949 Cadillac, it's been restored, so I'm not gonna be the guy that introduces any water to places I can't dry. So after that starts to saturate, the next thing you wanna do is take your microfiber towel and just like we use the rinseless wash, I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to let that leading edge grab that rinseless wash and all the dirt is primarily up here. Come back, lift this up just a little bit so now most of the dirt is going to be trapped in the center of the towel as I make that wipe and I'm done with this side. And so I'm not going to take any dirt I've removed off the paint and push it against the paint anywhere else on the towel. So I'll just flip over here to the other side and continue wiping. So there's the leading edge. One more wipe, lift that up. The middle of the towel catches the dirt. Those two sides are done. It's time to refold the towel. This is actually a car that's gonna be at my next boot camp class. And while the paint looks shiny, if I put the swirl finder light down here, you'd see all the swirls. Plus, it's got some kind of overspray on it, so it needs to be clayed also. So that's how you use a rinseless wash and a waterless wash. You use a heavy saturation of product for the waterless wash and lots of microfiber towels. And for the rinseless wash, you use a concentrate in two to three gallons of water. And after you make a few wipes with one of your towels, you dry with the secondary dry, drying towel like the Waffle Weave Guzzler towel. And using this technique, you can wash and get a car clean anywhere and get the same kind of results you get if you had a hose and a bucket. And that's the rinseless wash and the water wash. Now, when it comes to washing your car the traditional way, I teach two different ways to do that. I teach the aggressive method and the gentle method. And here's why, and this is important. If you have a car in nice shape, you wanna wash it gently so you don't put scratches back into the paint. It's this car washing process is where most people put the scratches in because they're not careful or they're not using high quality products. Now, if you have a car that's neglected and in bad condition and you're gonna wash it before you detail it, for example, before you compound, polish, and wax it, at this level, it's really important to get it super clean before the machine polishing process. So this would be the aggressive style. And there, it's important to know which style because you don't want to put scratches in a finish that's in great shape, but if you got a car that's neglected, you really want to get it clean. Now, there's the two bucket method, and that system is for a car in good shape, and here's why. Now think about it. The two bucket method, you use two buckets, you have the rinse bucket and you have the wash bucket. And the way that works is you start out gathering some soapy solution, you wash a panel, then you rinse your mitt off in the rinse water bucket and that's to get all the grit particles you removed off your mitt so you don't just keep transferring to other parts of the car. And if you think about it, when you're doing that kind of level of work using two buckets, it's not for a car in bad shape. It's for a car in good shape. You don't need to use a two bucket method for a car in bad shape, you're gonna buff it out. And so when you do the car in bad shape, you can just use a single bucket.
Now, the first thing I want to do is show you the aggressive method. And when I get a car in like this, it looks like it hasn't been waxed in years. So the first thing I want to do is chemically decontaminate it. And what happens is when your car is exposed to the world, you get all kinds of fallout that lands on the car. Now, this can be industrial pollution, traffic pollution, you know, all the cars that are emitting pollution out the exhaust pipe, or every time someone hits the brakes, the calipers and the brake drums and the brake pads are all emitting fine metallic particles, and they're in the cars in front of you as you're driving down the road, they get in the wind and they land on your car, and this is where you can get some metal filings that actually bond and embed into the paint. And what this product does, it's called Iron X, is it sinks out these particles and it dissolves them. And when it dissolves them, it turns them red. And that's how you can tell you're chemically decontaminating the paint. Then the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and wash the car, and that's gonna remove all the loose dirt. And after I rinse that dirt off, then I'm gonna show you how to mechanically decontaminate the paint during the wash process using the Cobra clay mitt. And what this does is it takes the place of the normal claying step, but you get it done during the washing step. So you save some time, you save some steps. So let me show you the Iron X first. But what you wanna do is go ahead and spray this down onto the paint, and you wanna let it dwell for about a minute. Now I like to apply it to the paint before I wash it or rinse it off while it's still dry because there's a, a film of dirt on there and that film of dirt helps to hold the Iron X onto the paint instead of it just running off. If you rinse the car off first, you can still use the Iron X, but you'll see a lot of the Iron X flying off the car when it hits the water. And this is usually a real eye opener for people because when you start to see your car bleed like this one is, you know your paint's contaminated. And the thing about these iron contaminants is traditionally what people would do is they would take and they would clay them off. And the problem with that is if you've actually got iron contaminants on the paint and you start claying them off, if you get them into the clay and rub the clay over the paint, you can put scratches into the car. So it's better to dissolve them first instead of trying to mechanically take them off. We call this chemical decontamination. And as you can see, there's all kinds of streams of red streaming down off the hood of this car. And that is the iron contamination I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dwell. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my car wash ready here. Now this is called a foam gun. This is the coolest tool for washing your car. And the way this works is you add your car wash soap to the container here. And then you have, of course, the sprayer up here and it's connected to the foaming device. And there's actually a metering rod here. And if you turn it over and look and push this back and forth, you can see very small holes on one end and then a larger hole towards the other end. And this lets you adjust how much foam you're gonna spray in the car. I like to go ahead and put it on full foam, the largest hole there so I get lots of foam on the car. And then you just attach this to your hose and instead of grabbing your soapy water out of the bucket, you lay down a thick, rich lather of foam and then you wash the car. You can always use that method if you want, but I'll tell you, as soon as you use the foam gun, you're never gonna turn your back on it. It's such a cool tool. Also, just to show you, these are called quick disconnects and it makes it handy to switch in between washing tools. And here's something else that's real important. This is a quick disconnect that connects to the foam machine here. And one of the things you want to do is you want to pull this back to attach it, but you want to make sure it completely releases, otherwise when you pull this trigger, it'll actually throw the gun into the car. I've done that before, take my word for it. Make sure it completely latches onto the foam gun before you pull the trigger. Okay, so I've let this dwell here for a second, so now I'm going to go ahead and foam it. Check this out. Just like that. Then take your wash mitt and go ahead and wash all that loose dirt and the dissolved iron particles off.
And when you're washing a car, of course, you want to start at the top and work your way down. But in order to show you this technique, it just works better to show you washing a hood. But normally, yeah, I would start at the roof and work my way down. Okay, so now I've got all the loose dirt off the hood and I'm ready to go ahead and uh, rinse this. Then I'll show you how the Cobra clay mitt works. This is the Cobra clay mitt. Now, this is a replacement for detailing clay, only you use it when you're washing the car. And the way this works is this is a polymerized rubber that uses the same type of abrasive technology detailing clay uses to abrade off contaminants. So a car like this that hasn't been washed or probably clayed in years, you know it's gonna have contamination. And the best way to use this is going back to the foam gun. So you just wanna take and turn your water on, Lay down a thick, frothy layer of foam. And this kind of acts as the clay lube, if you were using detailing clay. And the way you use it is you just take and you can put your hand inside of it, I just like to hold it. And you just sit there and you rub this thing back and forth. Now as I'm rubbing this right now, I can feel all types of little gritty particles and it's kind of keeping the mitt from wanting to glide effortlessly over the uh, paint here. But as I keep rubbing, just like clay, I can feel when it goes smooth, and that tells me I've removed the contaminants in that area. This is a real popular way that detailers like to decontaminate the car because they're trying to save some time. And by doing this during the washing step, they can get the car chemically decontaminated and mechanically decontaminated at the same time. So this stays in the step, increases profitability. If you're just gonna take care of your own cars, it still saves you a step. And it does a great job of removing all the contaminants. Things like overspray paint, industrial fallout, traffic pollution, tree sap mist, all the types of contaminants in the air that when they land on your paint, if they're not removed in a timely manner, they're gonna actually form a bond and they won't just wash off. They need to be abraded off and here's how you do it, the Cobra clay mitt. Now some people say, well, couldn't you just use that mitt when you're doing the iron X step? And the problem is you can't do that because remember the first step when you put the iron X on, you still have loose dirt on the hood. And because this is a flat surface here, you don't want to trap the loose dirt between the surface as you're rubbing on the paint, because that would put scratches in. So you want to wash it, get the loose dirt off, then you can go to the Cobra wash mitt. Then after you use that, then go ahead and I'm going to switch over to a water sprayer here using my quick disconnect. Then go ahead and rinse and then move on to the next panel. And that's what I call the aggressive method of washing a car. And that paint is just as slippery and smooth as it can be. And that's because I've chemically decontaminated it and I've mechanically decontaminated it all during the wash step. And this is exactly how you wanna treat a neglected car before you take it into the garage and start doing any kind of polishing work. You wanna make sure any abrasive particle is off that car because when you're machine polishing, your buffing pad can create an air current. And if you have particles down inside the cracks and crevices or around the air squares, it could pull those particles under the pad and that could cause a problem. So when you're gonna buff out a car that's been neglected, you wanna use the aggressive method, wash it really good, 
and then it's going to be ready for the, the next steps of compounding, polishing, and waxing. Now let me show you how to use the two bucket method and the careful approach for washing the car with a finish in excellent condition. Now let's talk about the gentle approach. If you've got a car in nice shape, it's already got a good coat of wax, synthetic paint cylinder, or paint coating on it, that means when it is dirty, that the dirt isn't going to really want to bond to the paint because it's a freshly waxed car. So what you don't want to do is what the mistake most people make, and that's to grab your wash mitt and sit here and run it back and forth with no rhyme or reason because if there is dirt there and you do loosen it and you keep rubbing it, you're going to put scratches in the paint. So when you have a car in nice shape, all you want to do is make one or two passes and then rinse that panel. Now let me show you how to use the two bucket method and this is where you use the two bucket method and that's for a car with a nice finish on it. What we have here is two buckets and notice the stickers, rinse and wash. These are important because we're going to start out with soapy water but as we wash this and we take our mitt and put it in the rinse water bucket, we're going to be putting soap in there and when you look down on the top of them, they're both going to have suds and you won't be able to tell which one is the rinse bucket and which one is the soap bucket without those labels. So it's important to get the labels or to somehow mark your buckets. Now for this wash bucket over here, I'm going to go ahead and add my car wash soap. This is like two or three ounces for four gallons. I got about five gallons in there so I'll just use the glug glug method. There we go. And I always keep a stir stick with me. There we go. And, then, and I always fill my buckets up with water first and then add the soap. What a lot of people do is they add the soap and then they try to add the water. When they do that, you have a bucket full of suds and no water. And so it's kind of a waste of time. So add your water first, then add the soap, and then mix it up a little bit like I did. And you'll have a nice soapy solution of water to wash your car. So here's how you use the two bucket method. This is a chenille microfiber wash mitt. I love these things. Just come down here, grab some soapy car wash solution. You're gonna come up here to the middle of the hood Make one or two passes, just like that. That's all you need to do if your car is in nice shape and then you're ready to rinse. Put that over there in the rinse water bucket. Go ahead and rinse. And that's how you can take care of a nice finish without putting scratches in it when you're washing the car. Just avoid scrubbing it. Now let me show you a technique I use for a car in really nice shape if you want to do everything you can to keep it in perfect shape. First I'm going to take and rinse off my wash mitt. Now I have grid guard inserts in both of these buckets and the way you use those is you actually push that mitt down there and you twist it back and forth against the grit guard insert. What that does is that insert pulls all the dirt off here so you don't simply transfer dirt from one panel to another panel. Then I'm going to regather my soapy solution and I'm going to come back up here and show you again on the hood here but watch this. Take your foam gun and here's a tip when you're using the foam gun you really need a foam that makes a lot of suds. This is the McKees 37 Extreme Foam Formula and I think you can see it makes a lot of foam. Okay, let me switch over, back over here to the foam gun nozzle, and again, when you go to attach this, make sure when you pull the release back and then you release it, it goes all the way forward and locks on or you'll throw the foam gun right into the paint. Okay, so watch, this is the extreme way to wash a car carefully. I'm going to have my mitt up here, I'm going to turn it on first. I'm going to put this big old frothy layer of foam right there in front of the mitt each pass. And I tell you, if you've got a dark colored car or a black car, you know how hard it is to keep that thing scratch and swirl free. And when you've got this kind of suds built up in front of the mitt providing lubrication and cushion, it's really going to cut down on the potential to put any kind of scratch or swirl into the paint. Then put that back in the rinse wash bucket and then rinse that section and then just keep moving around the car. It takes a little bit more effort to take these extra steps, but when you consider how long it takes to compound, polish, and wax your car, these little extra steps like this go a long way to keeping that finish nice for a long time. Now that you got the car completely washed and rinsed, it's time to dry it. 
And again, this is a, a process that you want to get the car dry, but you don't want to put any scratches in. So here's a technique if you really want to be uber careful. This is a Guzzler microfiber waffle weave towel. It's really soft and plush. You can use it over and over again and it won't scratch the finish. And instead of wiping the car, use the blotting technique. Lay this thing down, pat it a little bit. And while it's sitting there, it'll absorb the water off the car without you ever having to wipe it. And then just keep moving around the car. You can even do this on the sides. And that's called the blotting technique. And that's how you keep a show car finish looking like a show car. And if you want to, you can still use it to wipe with. It's very soft, but don't scrub the paint. Couple of passes and you're done. And that's the gentle approach to washing a car. And if you've got a nice car, this is the way to do it.